back. We are Welcome joined back. now by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who's made a return to our This Morning so far. Morning, Prime Minister. So lovely to see you. Via the kitchen. We did, we did, we did make him come and join us. We in the have kitchen. got so much to talk to you about, as mm -hmm. I'm sure you can imagine. But we do need to start. We did an item yesterday about you fasting from <laughs> Sunday evening to Tuesday morning. You've just had a bit of chicken. Is that your first bit of food in the last no, no. no? <laughs> I've already had my second pastry today. So <laughs> no, yes, I um I didn't think we'd ever be talking about this. I know, but welcome to this morning. <laughs> this is this morning. This is, here we go. <laughs> no, so I, I'm, I wish I was as disciplined as has been reported, first, first thing to say. <laughs> so, like all of us, I start the week with the best of intentions and then you, you, know, you hit contact with reality at some point. Now, I try on a Monday after an indulgent weekend to try and have a day of... Fasting and pull back. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not totally nothing, but largely nothing. Yes. And then pick Just, it back up. Do you have the odd Tuesday. nut? I do have the odd nut, exactly, that kind of thing. I yeah. knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Straight yeah. on. I mean, like I said, we'll start with the best of intentions. We all do, right? Yes. But then, and then things happen. But I think it's my, my problem is I love sugary things. Mm. So I eat a lot of sugary pastries and all the rest of it the rest of the week, and I like my food. I don't exercise as much as I used to because of the job. Yeah. So that is the so you thing. you like a little reset. So the little reset at the yeah. beginning of the week, little detox. Maybe that's the trick to it. Well, and I'm pleased we that go. you came in on a Tuesday rather than on a Monday because you yeah. wouldn't yeah. have been able to have that very nice chicken for you on a Monday. No chicken for you on a Monday. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, Rishi, it's so lovely to see you today. We have got so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, yeah, yes, yesterday, for me back. it's a pleasure. The government announced the sale of disposable vapes are going to be banned in the UK. Uh, we know there's new powers that's also going to be introduced to restrict flavours which are specifically marketed towards children. Um, how and when is this legislation going to be brought in? Because this is quite easy to say, but to do yeah. is a different matter. Mm. Yeah, so it's something you guys have talked a lot about on yeah. the show, actually, mm -hmm. and it's good that you have. You talk to any parent, any teacher, and they'll talk to you about the worrying rise that we've seen in kids vaping, right? It's tripled in the last few years, and no one thinks that kids should be vaping. We don't want them to get addicted. We also don't know about the long-term health impacts mm. of vaping, of course, because it's only been around for a little while. That's why I wanted to take action. And, and you, you kind of went over the things we're doing, banning disposable vapes, cracking down on the flavours, the appearance of things that look like they're really just for kids, yeah. and where they're displayed in stores, right? You know, where should they be? Behind the counter, by the till. So we've said that we're going to do all of those things. Now, we need to get that exactly right. The one, the, so we want to do it as soon as practically possible. Yeah. The thing we've got to get right is the balance between targeting kids vaping. We don't want that, and we want to make sure we clamp down on that. But look, for adults who are smokers, actually vaping is a very helpful tool for them to stop mm -hmm. smoking, which is good for their health, and we need to make sure that it's available for them. And that's the, the thing, the balance we just need to get right. So could this make it essentially harder for those adults? So those adults that are smokers that now vape, could the new legislation make that difficult for adults as well as the children that we don't want to access them? Yeah, and, that, and that's the balance that we've got to get yeah. right. And I think we have got it right. Because I think anyone who sees a, one of these packets, and, you know, bubblegum flavour, pink, this, you know, you've seen, mm. you've seen them, we've all seen them. I was at a school yesterday up in Darlington talking to the kids there and I had a big pile of them in front of me. As the kids themselves say, yeah. I was like, this is designed to target us. It's designed to target young kids. It's not designed at an adult. I know. And, and this they, is what's scary. And, and so I think yeah. we can do it. Yeah. I think we can focus on the things that impact children. And disposable vapes are overwhelmingly the ones that children use and all the flavours and the marketing, where they are in the store. While supporting adult smokers, we actually have an NHS scheme called Swap to Stop, which is helping adult mm -hmm. smokers with vaping. Richie, if you can get an appointment, let's be honest. It's hard to get a GP appointment at the minute. It's definitely the not the easiest. Game. Well, you know what? We're doing something about that as well, actually. So tomorrow, funny that you mentioned it, tomorrow we're making an announcement that you'll be able to go and visit your pharmacist instead yes. of your GP to go and get medicines you need for seven of the most common ailments. So think about things like ear, ear infections, sore throats. If you of your kids have got that, to your point at the moment, you have to wait for a GP appointment, maybe take time mm -hmm. off work, school, go get the prescription. So from tomorrow... It's really exciting because I grew up in a pharmacy. My mum was a pharmacist. I worked in a pharmacy growing up, so I know how incredible they are. You'll be able to go to your pharmacist instead of getting that GP appointment and actually for sore throat, ear infection and a bunch of other things, they will be able to get you the medicines you or your kids need without all of the hassle. And I think that's I a think really positive thing. That I think is positive, yes. I and think pharmacists do do a great job. They really do. do. And we've, yeah. we've actually we've done a phone-in about that before on the show oh, when good. I was hosting before yeah. where we said sometimes you don't necessarily have to visit yeah. your GP. Pharmacists do do a brilliant job. And we've covered that on here. The one thing that does come up time and time again that worries me is that misdiagnosis diagnosis is the people that aren't you know, for, if, if my little one had a cough, I would probably go to the pharmacy and sort it out that way and if it was something that was looking straightforward. But for the people that they take that time to pluck up the courage to go to the doctor and there's might have been something they've been living mm -hmm. in for a while and 
going to the pharmacy could be easy, but really they need that appointment. Is there, are we going to see a solution soon to GP appointments yeah. being available? Because we, do, we cover it so much right. on this I'm programme sure and it's yeah. so frustrating. Yeah, of course it is. Look, so I, I, I grew up with both. So my dad was a GP and my mum was a pharmacist. So I kind of grew up working primarily for my mum in her pharmacy. And to your point, Rochelle, ultimately, the choice is in the patient's hands. That's what we're doing. We're not saying you have to go and see the pharmacist. It, but they don't have a choice because they can't yeah. get an appointment and then the pharmacy is the only option. Well, so let's just do both things. A, pharmacists now are incredibly highly trained and mm -hmm. I think it's worth bearing that in mind. They have consultation rooms and we wouldn't have done this if we didn't think it was safe. And so that's the first thing to say. So I think people can, from tomorrow, go see their pharmacist and get the treatment for these seven common ailments. And we're very comfortable that's a safe thing to do. Ultimately, the pharmacist might say that they should go and see the GP or someone might feel more comfortable doing that if they think it's more serious. And you're right, we do need to do a better job of that. So what we are doing at the moment is making sure that all GP surgeries have the latest telephony systems. Because I think everyone who's mm. had to sit on the end of a phone, Horrendous. engaged call, actually, we can make that easier by just installing better phone systems with technology in all surgeries so that they can see the calls coming in, make sure that someone is spoken to quickly and gets a call back. That's being rolled out as we speak and it will make a difference. But you're right, this isn't going to be fixed overnight. We're also training more and more GPs, but that obviously will take time to... And that we the know system. there's not a magic money tree, but the junior doctors, they keep striking. Mm -hmm. A lot of people stand in solid solidarity with them yeah. because they do a fantastic job. Why can't we find that money to pay junior doctors more like they do in other countries? Yeah, so on, on this, you know, we found more money to pay all our NHS workers, actually, um, whether it's nurses, paramedics, physiotherapists, ambulances. We, we also recently reached a deal with the senior consultants committee that narrowly hasn't passed, which is disappointing. Yeah. And all of these things, Marlon, are on the basis of an independent recommendation. So it's not me saying this is what I think we, we know that. Them, right? So we've accepted those independent recommendations. In some cases, we've gone even further, for example, with the doctors. And the junior doctors were offered, you know, on average, a kind of 10% pay rise, and then that was increased. They've said no. All the other million NHS workers are all working and have accepted the offer, and it's worth saying thank you to all of them for that. And, look, it is disappointing. It is. And, and, and simply, it really is. Yeah, no, it is. But I think the thing, look, as you said, we don't have a magic money tree. We right? don't. And we don't, but we, there is money going other to, places. Well, we have that... to be fair to everybody. So I get that. With the I million other that. NHS workers have all actually come to a reasonable agreement with the government... Every other bit of the public sector has come to a reasonable agreement. And like, I think what we've done is fair, it's reasonable, it's been endorsed do, by do an you independent think it's body. Fair? I do, I you really do. do. I really do. And, and what I'd say to people is look, we had a month last year in November when there were no strikes. And in that month, the NHS waiting list fell by almost 100,000. It's the quickest reduction outside mm. of the pandemic we've seen in waiting lists in well over a decade. And it shows that when everyone's working, no one's on strike we can really get these waiting lists down that you were talking about earlier, Rochelle. Yeah. So I, mean, I really hope that people will get around the table and come I'm, to I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I think we all do. That, yeah. That's what we all want, let's be honest. But let's, let's be completely honest here. An election's going to be coming up at some point yeah. this year. If you're the man that sorts this out with the junior doctors... Surely that's surely a winner. Surely that's a winner for you. <laughs> no? Yeah, but look, you know, my job is to do what's right in the country in the long term. Is that right. not right? And, and, it, and I'll say, yeah. look, you're, you're right, right. Look, there's lots of things I could do. Of course there is. In the short term, everyone would say, yeah. oh, great, well but done. But then in the long but term, you the think of term. children yeah. and you think of, you know, what, one day I want to grow up mummy and I want to be a doctor. Doctors are striking. That's, you know, they're not, you know, getting paid the money they want and deserve. Uh, does that then stop the new generation of doctors, the people that hold this country up? Well, so, actually, one of the things we've done for the first ever time in the NHS's 75-year history is we've, we've given it what's called a long-term workforce plan. Because everyone knows we don't seem to train enough doctors and nurses in our own country and we're reliant on people coming from abroad. Yeah. Now, they make an amazing contribution to our NHS. They're amazing. Right? But look, I think everyone would think, look, it's better that we train people at home, more of them, and no-one has ever done that. Largely because, if, as a politician, you talk about elections, it takes 13, 14 years to fully train a consultant. You know, with the best will in the world, I'm probably not going to be sitting here in 13, 14 years. But I've done it because I think it's the right long-term thing for the mm. country that we do have more nurses, more doctors, more dentists, more ever everyone trained here at home. And from this year, we're rolling out the start of a huge expansion in training places. And again, look, that's not going to help overnight, but I think everyone would think that's the right long-term thing for the country. And I'd rather be focused on doing that 
and that is ultimately what leadership to me means. Right. Prime Minister, we don't have like two hours. We would love to sit here and discuss <laughs> oh, all of these yes. points yep. further, but there is a lot of things we do try and need to get mm -hmm, through. Mm -hmm. we, I don't know if you saw this morning, we had the parents of Grace and Barnaby yeah, I did. from the Nottingham attacks. Yeah. Uh, heroic families on our sofa this morning. They're calling for a public inquiry. They don't agree with what's gone on with the conviction. Um, of, They're of, very disheartened, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, you, know. you can't even begin to yeah. imagine. No. You've said it's not going to be ruled out, that there could be a public yeah. inquiry. What can you do to help them two families? We know you met yeah. yesterday. Yeah, I, I think the first thing to say is that just how awful oh. this was. Yeah. I think we all remember it vividly. I actually spoke to Grace and Barnaby's parents at the time last, last year, uh, over the weekend, and I remember it vividly today. And I think I have young kids and your kids are like, you mm -hmm. kind of send them out into the world and imagine they're going to be safe, right? And to have something like this happen is, is obviously unimaginable. And as I said to them yesterday, I can't, can't quite understand how they've got through the last no. year. Um, and I spent some time with them yesterday talking about the situation. And, you know, what they've expressed to me are a bunch of questions about what's happened that they have, which are all entirely reasonable. Absolutely. You know, you know what, how did the NHS operate? To, you know, was the mental health properly checked at? How was the police investigation conducted? How was the Crown Prosecution Service mm. operating and interacting with them? I think those are all perfectly reasonable questions. I would have those questions if I was oh, in their and shoes. and some more. Uh, yeah, and, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's, like, what I said to them is that we will get the answers. Right, that's what they deserve. That's what I've committed to. And we've set up investigations, independent ones, into all those areas I mentioned, the NHS, the Crown Prosecution Service, the police forces that did this. So they're all going to be looked at independently so we can get those answers. And that's going to happen promptly and thoroughly and effectively as quickly as possible. And once we hear back from that, then we can sit down with them and decide if there are more questions that need answering, is the inquiry then the next yep. logical step? Right. But, okay. I mean, it was an awful situation. It's terrible. When we talk about knife crime, we two teenage boys were stabbed to death um, in Bristol on Saturday night. It just keeps... I've seen at the minute Idris Elba is campaigning. Mm. It, it's not going anywhere. It seems to be getting worse. You seem to be waking up and hearing another story. And, and but, but let me just say as well, we can talk statistics and say this has gone up, this has gone down, yeah. but ultimately it's two more lives that have been lost. It's, it's too much. Two, two lives, too yeah. many. What... What can we do when it comes yeah. to knife crime? Because it's terrifying as a parent, as anybody, yeah. it is terrifying. Yeah, look, it is, but you know, particularly as a parent because it disproportionately seems to impact young people. Young people. Right? And they're having their lives snatched away from them in these tragic circumstances. And you're right, and let's not, not get into the statistic yeah. because every life that is lost is a life too mm -hmm. many. So, first of all, we need to have police officers, right, first and foremost, so we've put 20,000 more police officers on the street. But then what's also important is they have the powers that they need. And the particular one is around... Do you think people respect the police? Yeah, I do. You know, I do. Look, obviously, there have been some incidences that have happened I think the, the police past do a fantastic year. job, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. And look, there have been some incidences opinion, that have shaken like people's confidence. But, you know, that is a minority, and those people have been dealt with, and the police have learned from that. But, look, the vast majority of police officers are working very hard to keep us safe. And do they you think they need more praise. powers? Yeah, so the powers they need is things on stop and search, which they've been using, because ultimately that has helped them confiscate 100,000 knives. And mm. one of the things that we're expanding is if they're in someone's home or they see a knife that is unconnected to the reason that they are there, they now will have the ability to actually confiscate that knife. Currently, they don't. That's something that they mentioned to me when I visited with them right. uh, several months ago. Why don't they? Well, I, look, these are things that will happen in the past, and now we're expanding the powers. And, and so can't, they... we, can't we make that change tomorrow? No, we're making, we're making it quickly, right? So we are making How it quickly. How quick quick? Well, so rather than the thing with these, there'll be there's lots of people who say, "Hang on, we don't like it when the police stop and search people." Um, I agree. And we don't like yeah, there's a things. Yeah. So there's a, and it's, it's right in a democracy we have those mm -hmm. debates. That my view is we should give the police those powers, and then we also on the sentencing side. What we, because we changed the law already, you're starting to see the benefit of that. So people are more likely to be in jail because of knife offences, they're more likely to spend good. longer in there. And that is a good thing. Yeah. And we want to make sure there's a deterrent. Look, I think the other side of this is, now that's on the law enforcement side, we can't lose sight of the fact that we also just need to keep investing in youth services. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. like we want safe places for our kids to be able to go after school at the weekends and to make sure they've got positive role Most models. Definitely. Yeah, and I used to volunteer at a boys and girls club um, you know, a while back when I was living abroad, and we have fantastic boys and girls clubs and youth clubs across the country. They do an incredible job, and we're supporting them with extra resources and funding. Mm -hmm. Because that's the other side of it that we can't oh, yeah. there's, there's, there's multi facets to it. Yeah. But we know you've got other engagements today as well. You're a very busy man. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're running the country. 
autumn election. When's it happening? What's going on? <laughs> Are you going to win it? No, look, so I think I've said what I've said about Was the timing no? of that. <laughs> no, on the timing, on the timing. Yeah. No, and I think, look, we, I've been very clear. Like, we've been through a tough time, right, over the yeah. past year as a country, still dealing with the legacy of COVID, yeah. backlogs in the NHS, for example, war in Ukraine, energy bills. But I really believe that this year, at the start of this year, we've turned a corner and we're heading in the right direction. And the plan we've put in place is working. And you can see that most obviously with the economy. That's the foundation of, you know, everyone watching wants financial security. Mm. And inflation was 11% when I got this job. It's more than halved to 4%. So when, when are our viewers going to be heading to the polling? Well, that I've already Boxes. said, a working assumption about that. But like, this is really important. Just what tell they tell me, no one, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one else watching, <laughs> no one else just you and me here. No, it's just, but like, on just this right. point about this financial security, like, actually just by tomorrow, right, everyone will have had in their pay slip the tax cut that we put in place, because of our management of the economy, the plan was working. So if you're earning £35,000, getting a tax cut this year worth 450 so that's, that's what we're starting to deliver now. And if we stick with this plan, I'll better give everyone watching, all of your viewers, the peace of mind that there's a brighter future for them and their children. We've got 10 seconds new before we the go country. to there's a break. There's no autumn that is, election. That is, that is what we're going to be talking about. 10 seconds about before we go to a break, are you feeling confident? I am. You are? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I've been fueled by the chicken, yeah, the chicken <laughs> from this morning. Well, it's I mean, a Tuesday. That chicken can change everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy on a Tuesday. Exactly. I start to get eating again. Exactly. So there we go. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, today. great you. to see you both. Thank Thanks you. for having Thank me. Thank you so, so much.